Welcome to another episode of Dan 5-Minute Factoids. Today we'll be talking about pneumoplasty with Nostachian tube function. The Eustachian tube connects the nasopharynx, that is the back of the nose, with the middle ear. And that allows the eardrum to relax as we equalize while diving. Many people have problems with the Eustachian tube due to allergies or polyps or other abnormalities and there are a number of alternative ways of improving function. Obviously it's always better to practice equalizing rather than receiving surgery, but in some cases surgery will be necessary. If you've been identified by an ENT surgeon as being one of those candidates, we can offer you the assurance from the literature that at least 66 to 80 percent of people benefit from a balloon pneumoplasty of the Eustachian tube, where they literally put a thin thread-like balloon into the Eustachian tube and inflate it slightly to make it a little bit wider and easier to equalize. Now not everybody needs that and there's something else that we'd like to show you today as well. It's called an Otovent and you can buy them commercially and we'll show you the link but they're quite hard to get in South Africa when last we checked and it's very easy to make a similar version of this for yourself. Essentially it's a nozzle. So this is a hollow tube and this round part you'll see just now seals against the nose whereas the skirting is there to hold a balloon. Now, I'm going to show you how this works. You take an ordinary party size balloon like this, you put it over the skirting like that, you inflate the balloon with your mouth, not with your nose, with your mouth. Pinch it when it's about this size and here's the important part. You hold it against the one nostril and as it deflates, you swallow. It makes the most ghastly noises and you then repeat with, with the other nostril. Now I could feel my Eustachian tubes flat, flap in the wind like leaves because I've got normal Eustachian tubes, but many people don't. And a simple procedure like this, which obviously you won't do in public, so you carry it in your pocket and do it three times a day when you go to the bathroom or so, but carry it with you. And often we find after a week, people who really struggled with their ears are able to equalize without any additional assistance whatsoever. So that's a really, really great technique. And it's quite easy to find a nozzle like this. Something that you can literally just strap a, uh, strap a balloon to and blow through. It just needs to seal against the nose. You don't shove it all the way in. It just seals against the skirting of the nose. Lastly, we want to show you how you can make a rinsing kit. Now you can buy these commercially as sinus rinse uh, or sino rinse or you can make it yourself. Basically what you need is about a 300 ml plastic bottle like this. You could, the, the type that you would buy ketchup in. You can get this in places like Plastic Land or other plastic um, manufacturing companies. You then take a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, it can be any brand, baking soda, and regular, regular salt, table salt, a quarter teaspoon of each, and you dissolve that in a clean, cooled quantity of water. So you'll take bottled water, in other words it must be potable, drinkable water, you'll heat it and allow it to cool down to about body temperature. 
and then you stir the salt and the baking soda in it and then what you do is you would literally stand at the at the basin and you would literally you wouldn't close the nostril in this case you'd support the nose and you'd literally squirt the solution up into the nose and it would run out of the other side we'll show you a video clip to show you how it's done and you would repeat that also two to three times a day again the combination of irrigation and pneumatization using the otovent can solve many eustachian tube problems that otherwise would be need management by an ENT surgeon or would uh, require the use of decongestants which aren't necessary. We hope that this video has been helpful to the person who asked the question specifically but to all divers and seasons changing and so uh, head colds and flu. Until next time, safe diving.